Breakfast on BBC One Football Focus with Dan Walker. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, our cup runneth over. This is what we have coming up for you. Sutton United were the last non-leaguers to knock out a team from the top tier. 24 years ago, can Macclesfield make magic again? I lived in Sutton, so it's, hopefully there might be some little home in there. <laughs> it's 30 years since Brighton walked Wembley Way. This weekend, it's Gus against the Gunners. The Arsenal, they was winning trophies. When I was a player, it was not a great team to play against. No shortage of League Cup talking points this week, where we discovered ball boys can be a hazard. And Aston Villa had a miserable week, but we'll hear from a man who certainly enjoyed his Tuesday night in Birmingham. Bradford City can smell the hot dogs of Wembley Way! What a sensation! Delighted to say we have the Bradford City boss, Phil Parkinson, on the show today. We've never been happier that a game has fallen foul of the weather. He's hoping to lift the League Cup this season. Paul Ince and Mark Lawrenson have won the other one three times between them. It's currently 2-1 to Ince, by the way. He asked me to say that. Uh, we shall talk about Bradford City in a minute. But let's start today with the FA Cup, where there is uh, more than a whiff of a giant killing this weekend. Twelve matches in the fourth round today. Two non-league teams have made it this far. Luton and Macclesfield. Back to today's FA Cup and one of Loro's old teams now, Brighton. Arsenal visit their impressive ground today, a far cry from the dark days of the 1990s, where it was actually a Gunners great, Liam Brady, who helped keep the financial wolf from the door. What a goal that was. Uh, Mark Clement has been having a chat. The Goldstone ground echoes with the cheers of Brighton and Hove Albion fans, but soon these terraces will be gone, demolished for development. They were in a bad way, they had no financial resources. Inches, I would say, inches away from going out of business completely. The latest protest against Chairman Bill Archer, a mass walkout. People who own the club plan to sell the Goldstone ground to make money and get out. And no ground, no home. Club with a great tradition. We hate Archer. We hate Archer. Great support in the city, in Sussex as well. And these people just didn't, didn't care. Can you remember what the trigger was that sort of forced your hand to, to leave? Yeah, I knew what was going on, and I was getting friendly with the supporters who were anti the owners, and they got wind of that, so the parting of the ways came quite quickly. But, uh, you know, I was better on the outside probably for the club than I was on the inside, because on the inside I couldn't do anything. I was employed by them. On the outside, they didn't have any influence on me, you know. So I started a campaign against the move away from the Goldstone. We managed to keep that uh, back a year. I teamed up with Dick Knight, the former chairman. He went through some tremendous battles to get the grip of the club in the first place, and then to get planning permission for the stadium that they have now. And I helped him. Uh, I was always there. And all the people are so pleased that the club is in the position they're in. Have you ever been given the history lesson as to how the club ended up at the With Dean? You know, the whole problem in the uh, 90s thrown out of the Goldstone ground in... Yeah, because of, Cha because of Charlie. Charlie Oldway. Charlie Oldway. Yeah, he's my first team coach. Uh, even him now, he cannot believe it because he was through the bad times and um, he knows how much he means for people of Brighton. Oh, Brady won it beautifully. What do you know about Liam Brady? You do know between 93 and 95, he was sitting in your seat. Well, it's good because uh, then he knows uh, what it means for, for me to be in this situation, in this position. He, he probably knows better than me because he was in a totally different situation. And uh, I hope he's 
happy what I'm, I'm doing because I'm, I'm sure that he got some part of his heart in Brighton. It's Buckley in again. 2-1 Brighton! Will Buckley! You must take enjoyment watching a team like Brighton and the way that they play the game. Well, I think the future of the English game really, really does depend on that. If you're going to win trophies at Champions League level or international level, you've got to have highly technical players. And you'll only get highly technical players by playing in a highly technical way. And I think Poye and Arsene Wenger do that. I mean, Arsenal is, is big for us and it's going to be full, as you know, so loud and everybody is going to enjoy the day. I think the week is different because you play Arsenal. But when I sit there at uh, 3 o'clock, it becomes the most important game of my life. So uh, don't worry, everybody's going to be awake and it's going to be a good game. I always wanted to, to get a chance for Brighton to play Arsenal more than anything so they get the revenue when they really needed it. OK, they don't need it so badly now, but it's, it's a huge game for them and it really puts the Brighton and Hove Albion story back on the map. And uh, I think it's great. So, lovely bit of telly, that, with uh, the great Liam Brady. Mm. telling us before about what a player he was, when he went to Juventus and all that. But the, the Brighton have got a difficult past, but a very bright future. <clears throat> what about their immediate future today? Do you, well, against Arsenal, one of the problems might be that they're, they're a good football inside Brighton. They get the ball out from the back and pass it around, which is maybe not quite what you need against Arsenal, who are extremely good in terms of playing pure football. So I think it's a real tough tie for them. But when you consider that game at Hereford all those years ago when they could have gone out of the league, and where they are now, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic story.